One of the things I get asked regularly is, Chip, tell me how to get more information on this literary approach to scripture, which is a great question and things that we're trying to do here um, on, the, on the channel. One of the things that you'll see in reading um, literarily scripture, and again, nothing against the historical grammatical hermeneutic. We need those things. We need background culture, language, syntax, all of that stuff. But the literary um, way of reading scripture helps us to understand how to properly just read a book. And one of the things that we're not trained very well um, theologically in any seminary is how to read a book with literature um, as literature. And, and if you take literature classes and you, and you study literature, you learn these themes and you learn how to read a book. And so one of the things that I want you to understand about the literary um, approach to scripture is that the stories oftentimes are retold and repackaged in a different way because there's the assumption that you have read the story that came before the next story. And, and we see this all throughout the Hebrew Bible. Um, in fact, it's one of the ways that, that the Jewish people um, uh, wrote back in the day because they did not have books like you and I have or iPads or phones. Um, they had what was called an oral tradition. That's A-U-R-A-L. That's, that's, it comes from the auditory side where you had to hear these stories. And so hearing these stories, one of the things that they would do is they would retell some of the themes that would help you to remember the story and to build upon the story. Doesn't mean that they weren't true. Doesn't mean that they're historically inaccurate. What it means is though, is they used things and embedded certain literary cues to help us understand. For instance, one of the great stories of the Bible is the creation account, isn't it? I mean, the creation is this wonderful story about God who takes a world that has the briny sea that covers it. There can be no life. And what does he do? Well, he separates the dry ground from the See, and as you know as well as I do, when you remove water from some place, the, the ground is going to be damp and muddy and, you know, and, and, and very still soggy. Well, one of the miracles in the creation is this, the dry ground comes up out of the water. That's, that's a miracle in and of itself, and that's on day three. And, and so this story in, in, in Genesis, if you recall it, you have this, this darkness that sort of covers the, the, the world you have the Spirit of God that comes and starts to hover on the waters. You have God saying, let there be light in the story. And then you have on day three, you have the dry ground that emerges from the, from the water. Well, let me give you an example of how that's retold and oftentimes missed when we're reading another story. So in Exodus 14, we have this wonderful story of Moses taking the children of Israel up to the Red Sea, and it's sort of a crisis moment, isn't it? I mean, you know, they're there, what's gonna happen? Pharaoh's at our back, the water's here in front of us, what's gonna happen? And the children of Israel start to realize this is a bad situation. Well, we're told in scripture in chapter 14, and again, these are the literary cues people had. Chip, how do you see these things? Again, understanding that the retelling of stories is part of understanding how to read scripture. What happens? Well, what we know is, is we're told that a wind, the Ruach of God, the, the, this, this breath, wind, spirit of God comes upon the waters. Well, that, that should be a literary cue that, hey, maybe there's gonna be some things that follow. And it is, because what happens? Well, the pillar of fire comes around and stands in between Moses and the Egyptians, which means there's light now. So we have the wind, we have the light, and what happens? It says that the dry ground emerged from the sea. What we're being told here is a new creation story. It's the creation of the people of God, Israel. It's the creation of the community that God will use to do the things that he needs to be, do that needs to be done in the world. And so once again, you see when we're talking about how do I read in a literary way, understanding the convention that oftentimes a story that you've read before gets told bef again in another story and it's embedded there and it really makes those stories powerful when we understand how to read in a literary way.